Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, we're talking list boxes, or select elements as the hippies like to call them. Now, let's face it, list boxes are a programming nightmare on any platform. There are so many ways people want to use them, but I have to say the HTML select element, while simple, gets the job done without much ceremony. Simple, yes, but it can also be powerful enough to give us features like multiple selection. Blazor, on the other hand, hasn't yet implemented multi-select, but with JavaScript interop, anything is possible. So let's talk about what's necessary to add multiple selection and another great feature, checkboxes, to your Blazor list boxes. And that's coming up right now, right here on Blazor Train! So I've just created a Blazor server uh, application in .NET 5. It's called Better List Boxes. And we're going to start with pure HTML and move out into building some of our own components. And we'll see where we end up. So we're going to start with a model. We're going to create a list of books, my quarantine reading list. So let's start with a book model. We'll add that to the data folder. So every book has an ID, a title, and a description. OK, now we're going to add a book service so we can get that data. Book service has a list of books. And if we go and ask for it, and there's no books in there, we're going to add three books. Practical Snow Melting for Fun and Profit, How to Shave a Cat, and Winning at Tic-Tac-Toe. My very, very complete quarantine book reading list right there. Now we have to add the service. So we'll go to Startup so we can inject it. There it is, book service. And uh, of course, we can't do anything without having a using statement and imports. Well, we could, but it's just easier, right? Finally, let's hijack our index page. Got my select element here. We're looping through each book in bookservice.books. And we even got an option for a selected book, which when we select something book selected happens and we get the ID from the value and pull out the selected book. Okay. And if the selected book is not null, we show the details, the ID, the title, and the description. Very simple. And away we go. Select one of these guys and you can see the details below. And uh, this is my favorite actually, winning at tic-tac-toe. Uh, Show your bratty kids who's boss. Learn the expert techniques to win every time. Because I love beating helpless children at tic-tac-toe. Makes me happy. If we're going to add functionality, let's make a component at least. So let's turn this into a list box component. I'm going to go to the shared folder and add a razor component called list box. So list box has this items parameter, which is a list of list items. Now we don't have that yet, so let's add list item to our data folder. So list item is a more generic item that you would put, uh, use as a list box item, but it's it's got expandability. So you have an ID, you've got an item text which shows up in the list, you got an item data which is an object. So this could be anything, any kind of object. If there's complex data that goes along with what's in the list, there it is. And is checked. All right, so I'm tipping my hat here. Yes, we are going to do check boxes in a list box, but that comes later. Hold on to your hats. All right, let's go back to list box. Got my items. I've got a parameter for size because, you know, the size of the list box. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And then I've got a parameter for style so that we can set some style parameters on the fly if we want. Here's my callback selected item changed, which is going to pass a list item. I've got my selected item and then my on item selected. I basically get the ID from the value and I pull the selected item out and raise the event selected item changed. So let's create a demo page for this. I'm going to go to pages and add a razor component called simple list box demo. 
All right, so it looks pretty similar to the last one. We've got our book service. This time we're implementing a list box component with uh, items set to books and all the stuff set here. The difference is that we have to translate our list of books into a list of list items. So on initialize, we're going through the book service books and we're adding to the books new list items with the ID, item text, and item data field. Now the item data field, I've just got set to the description of the book, but of course it could be the book itself. Let's say the book has all sorts of fields and it's probably going to, let's face it. I would probably want to set item data because it's an object to the book itself. But for this demo, this is going to work just fine. So now let's modify our nav menu. Let's get rid of fetch data and counter and we'll add an item for the simple list box demo and give it a shot. All right. Absolutely the same behavior. In fact, it renders the same stuff. It's just now we've got a springboard that we can use for other stuff, our list box control. Let's add stuff to it. Starting with multi-select. How do you do multi-select? Well, there's a little problem with blazer and multi-select. Let me go back to index here and just do what I would normally do in HTML, which is put the multiple attribute on a select element and let's just see what happens. So right off the bat I select the first one. Now the first one and the second one are selected and if I go to the bottom the middle one and the bottom one are selected and if I press like control I can kind of, and I hold control down, I kind of get around it, but it's only selecting one and the UI is really messing me up here. So that's a problem. Now, Blazor doesn't have anything built in yet for multi-select uh, in a list box or, a, you know, multiple select, but there is a workaround. So let's create a new component called multi-select list box. So multi-select list box is a select and it does have an on change and it does use the multiple, okay? But notice that I'm just going through the items. I don't have any selected option here. Uh, I don't have a selected item object, right? I'm just going through the items because it all happens here in on item selected. Now, one thing you need to know about this is that you're gonna need an ID. Now I've got a default here, multi-select list box, but if you've got two of these on the same page, now you've got two with the same default ID. So you definitely want to set the ID. Items, the same, size the same, style the same. Now my event callback for selected item change has turned into selected items change, and I'm passing a list of list items. But here's the magic right here in unselected. I'm calling a JavaScript method, which I'll show you in a second, get selected values, and I'm passing the ID. Uh, that's returning me a, an array. I'm turning that into a list. And that is going to retrieve a list of the values. And the values, if you recall, would be the IDs. So it's going to return a list of ints. So now what I have to do is create a list of list items. And I have to go through and find all the items by ID and add them to my selected items list. And that's what I'm going to tell my caller that we have a list of list items. So let's get into that JavaScript. Of course, that's going to be an underscore host. And I'll just add the script tag right here. Get selected values. We pass the ID. First, we try to get the element, the select element by ID. And if we got it, we're going through the options and if the option is selected we're adding it to this array results and particularly we're adding the value so we need to do this in javascript because blazor doesn't have access to the dom elements directly so anytime you need to get any kind of data out of a dom element that isn't accessible via blazor you can do some javascript like this so there's that. Let's create a page for it. 
called multi-select demo and here we go we've got our book service we've got uh, our multi-select list box i've got an id set there my width my style my items the unchanged everything's okay there now again i have my on initialize to turn my book service books into list items and i've got on my selected items changed it passes in a list of list items I just set selected books to selected items and invoke state has changed. So that is what this uses, this little code block right here to go through the selected books and just like before, show the ID title and description. All right, let's update our nav menu. Boom. And away we go. Now, if I just use it like a regular list box, that's fine. But if I hold down control, now I can select more than one. I can select them all. And I can even go to the top, hit shift, and then select the bottom one and all three get selected. Multi-select list box. Now, check boxes. Wouldn't it be cool if we could just add check boxes and other stuff in the list box so that we can customize it? That's what I really want, right? Well, let's see what happens if we're, we're in our list box control right here. And what happens if I just put an input in there? Hmm, I got some squiggles. And it says, element input cannot be nested inside element select. So that's a no-go. Well, I wonder if I can do it inside my option. Let's try that. And it says... Element input cannot be nested inside element option. So that is a big bummer. If I want to do checkboxes, I actually have to not use a select. And if I'm not using a select, what am I using? A div? Yeah, you have to start over. You don't get all the stuff that a select gives you. You have to do it yourself. But just entertain me for a minute while we try to do this. Let's add a new razor component to shared called checked list box. So we've got our div, we've got our style. There's no size because that's not a, an attribute of div. So every, we have to do all the CSS ourselves for this list box. So I'm just starting with the list of items and I've got a show check boxes property here. Um, which is a, a Boolean. I've got a callback for the selected item check changed, which is different from selected item changed. Yeah, I know that sometimes the behavior is you wanna just check the checkbox to select it, but this is like a completely separate control, the checkbox, but it is associated with that item. So we've got a on checkbox changed that gets called here, right, in the checkbox on checkbox changed. I've got my checked property set to at item is checked and that will do the binding for me nicely and let me support on checkbox change when I change it. Whew, it's kind of kind of strange, I know, but let's uh, make a demo page and see what happens. So here's our checked list box. I'm setting show checkbox is equal to true. I've got two event handlers, one for selected item check change and the other selected item changed. And on book check changed, which is this guy, I'm just going to call state has changed to update the UI because if in our little selected book code block here, if the selected book is checked, then I'm showing a div that says checked. All right, so that's it. Now let's uh, update the nav menu, and here goes nothing. So there we go. Here's my practical snow melting for fun and profit. You can see I don't have a border, I don't have anything, but I do have this checked right there. Now if I check this and I come down here, I've selected this guy, and if I go back, you can see this is checked, right? So the checkbox is completely independent, and you can see it's not quite lining up. So needless to say, you do have a bit of work to do with CSS. But let me get you started here. 
let's change the div and add some more style to it. So overflow auto means there's going to be a scroll bar on the vertical if we're overflowing. I'm going to set a definite height. I'm going to set a padding. I'm going to put a black border around it, solid one pixel. So there you go. Same thing, but now the mouse wheel works and I've got this scroll bar here and uh, everything else works the same. All right, so this should be enough to scare you away from going beyond a multi-select list box in a component. Uh, I recommend using the Dev Express list box, which just makes all this stuff go away. So before we leave, I will show you what that looks like. I'm going to add Dev Express as a NuGet package. When you become a Dev Express customer, you get your own feed, uh, Dev Express feed. You, that's a, a particular URL where you can get the latest stuff. And so I've searched for Blazor. I'm adding and installing that. Now I have to add the style sheet. Add a using statement to imports. And now we can create a demo page. I don't need a component because the component's already there. But the demo page is going to be called DX List Box Demo. So there it is, a DX List Box. I've got my data. I've got the selection mode set to multiple. That's optional if you want a multi-select list box. I'm telling it that the field name uh, that I want to show, the text field name is title. And I'm binding the values to selected books. I've got my selected books right here. And if I'm setting selected books, I have to invoke state has changed. So that's just a little thing you have to do. So let's update the nav menu and let's see what this looks like. So here we go. It works just as a regular single select, but if I hold down control, now I have multi-select. And I can also hold down shift and go from the top to the bottom. Everybody's happy. Check boxes, you say? How about this? Show check boxes equals true. And now they absolutely do act as selectors as well. Now there's another cool feature of the DX list box, which is multiple columns. So you can see right here, I've added three lines, DX list editor column. I've got one for the ID, I've got one for the title, and I've got one for the description. So this is gonna put three columns in my list box in each item. There you go. So, yeah, you can roll your own if you like. Uh, if you want to go beyond a multi-select list box, however, you're in for a world of CSS. And, uh, you know, if you want to go beyond that, I think the, the best thing to do is use a great third-party control like uh, Dev Express Blazor. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. So hopefully now you know that there's only so many features you can pack into the select element before you have to build a whole new engine. That said, the old iron horse can get you 80% of the way home. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze the trail.